Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our first Rocket Matter in Legal Fuel CLE of 2020. We are excited to kick off our new year with exciting new CLE courses for our Florida Bar members. Today is no exception. Today we're going to be talking about how to grow your law firm through referral alliances. And we have a very special guest host. Her name is Cara Pryor. She is the co-founder of the Legal Referral System and president of James Publishing. And she is the one that personally established the highly effective appointment setting techniques that are the backbone of what is called the legal referral system. So you're gonna see some of the uh, tips and tricks over the next hour. And also she's the co-author of the ebook, How Small Law Firms Can Obtain More Referrals. So before I let Cara take it, I am going to go over some housekeeping. Um, on your screen, you should have some sort of GoToWebinar control panel. And in that, there is something called a questions widget. There should be a section that says questions. So throughout the, the course, if you do have any questions, you can feel free to type those in there. We're going to try to save some time at the end for Q&A. But first, if um, for those of you who are listening, who can see the screen, if somebody could just please use that questions widget to let me know that you can see the screen, that you can hear my voice, that would be great, just so we know that you know everything is copacetic. Um, anybody? Anybody at all? Going once, mm -hmm. going twice. Okay, I can see the screen. Uh, can you guys hear me? Can anybody hear me? Hear you, perfect. Okay, so we can see the screen. We could hear, very good, awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, let's me know that you know you are live out there in TV land. Anyway, the uh, the course has been approved for one hour of general CLE credit through the Florida Bar. The course number will be shown at the very end, and you will also get an email with the recording and the slides tomorrow afternoon, just in case you missed anything. So without further ado, I am going to pass it off to Cara. Cara, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. It's a pleasure. I'm excited to to dive in and, and excited to uh, you know address the the Florida bar members as well. So, as Lisa mentioned, uh, today's session: how to grow your law firm through referral partner appointments. So. I'm really going to show you the most efficient techniques for establishing referral alliances with, with other professionals. Um, but before we start, I did want to just point out quickly that this session does not refer to, you know, working with qualified providers, for-profit lawyer referral services, or any kind of matching websites. We're 100% focused on how you, as the attorney, can reach out to potential partners to really secure these referrals. So uh, it's, it's very much uh, in, in your court, and there's so much much, so much that can be done um, with kind of minimal investment. So uh, sound good? Let's go ahead and dive in. Um, see if we can get these slides. There we go. So I mean, why are referrals so important? I mean, you already know referred clients, they tend to be your highest quality clients, but they're also the most affordable to obtain. They typically come sort of pre-sold on your services and come in kind of with a, a higher level of trust and respect. They're more likely to, to pay on time. And really, in the end, they're more likely to refer others to your firm in the future, right? So there's really no question that referrals are sort of marketing gold for law firms. And, and it certainly makes sense to invest some time and some money into generating a steady flow. Because if you can create a referral-based firm, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can worry less about your marketing and your other kind of uh, client attraction secrets. So um, moving on, uh, why do most lawyers really sort of stink at creating a steady stream of referral business? It's true. <laughs> most lawyers do, uh, you know, don't do a great job in this area, but I mean, you guys are busy, right? I mean, like I said, building that steady stream of referred clients, it does take a decent chunk of time and effort, but creating a systemized sort of coordinator coordinated approach like the one that we'll outline today is really kind of the best way to do this. 
of course, finding the time to sort of consistently grow your referral network is tough, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you those, those tips and tricks that will really help in that way, really help you streamline and focus only on the, the kind of top priority, highest return items. Uh, but, but certainly attorneys tell me all the time that, you know, they'll occasionally take another lawyer or professional to lunch or to grab coffee, but rarely do I hear about any sort of follow-up that occurs or kind of a system in place to ensure that you're staying top of mind on an ongoing basis with these referral sources. So certainly providing outstanding service to your clients is, is of course the first step in, in kind of you know creating that referral based firm but you must regularly and consistently sort of be cultivating these referral relationships so that's what we're going to kind of start on uh, initially um and you know there there really is kind of a better way than you know sporadic right so uh, you know, I say here, like identifying professionals interested in passing along referrals before you invest the time in relationship building is key to sort of setting, you know, setting yourself up for success. Again, we're not looking how much can we throw against the wall to see what sticks. We want to be as targeted as we can. So kind of starting with step one, setting appointments. In our efforts to you know, help attorneys kind of uh, match with referral sources, we've sent hundreds of emails, postal letters, made you know, over a thousand calls. So we've really kind of managed to settle on a simple approach that works really, really well. And that's what I want to outline for you now. Uh, very first step, probably the most critical step, is generating a list of we recommend around 50 local professionals initially. So usually that means uh, three quarters attorneys in complementary specialties, and then about you know one quarter non-attorneys with overlapping you know clients or, or patients. So we've certainly found that that other lawyers get it. Other lawyers you know also are looking to build referral-based practices. So we tend to include more of them. We were doing a 50-50 split, but um, you know we recommend. Uh, you know, the 75-25 split to, to be the most effective. Uh, but, you know, attorneys, you know, you guys, you understand the importance of a solid referral network. So it's a little bit, you know, we have a little bit greater success in that area. But certainly some select categories of what we call allied professionals are, are also highly interested. So um, on this slide here, the other professionals that we recommend are, are here. So, so if you practice, if you're, if you're a bankruptcy firm, we certainly recommend reaching out to debt counselors. If you practice in business litigation, CPAs can be a great source. Uh, criminal defense or DUI, uh, mental health professionals and rehab centers. Uh, estate planning, we have really, really solid success with financial planners. So that's where we, we recommend you, you uh, focus. Uh, if you're a family law or divorce attorney, marriage counselors, family therapists, uh, personal injury, of course, chiropractors, physical therapists, uh, potentially doctors, and then uh, also in social security disability, chiropractors, as well as mental health professionals. We've, we've found um, great success. That's where we kind of recommend that you, that you start. But I mean, you know, you obviously know your clients and, you, and your firm best. You probably can identify those categories of professionals that you feel would commonly come across the, the sort of exact type of client that you're looking for. So identifying those categories and then um, you know, kind of compiling this list is 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 kind of the next step. So let me. This is just a sample list um, uh, of prospective referral sources. So I just show you this because you know you could create a very similar basic spreadsheet, but it's important that you include as much information as you can find through you know some basic internet searching, uh, and that that's you know the best way to kind of compile these lists is to search. Uh, the category, the specialty of attorney, as well as the, the category of professional, um, plus, you know, the, the geographic location that you're looking to target, of course, and then doing a little bit of online research, seeing how those how those uh, attorneys and professionals are marketing themselves. Do they have a decent website? Are they, you know, do they have some publicity perhaps? Or are they, you know, do they have a, a completed AVO profile? Are they, um, you know, what, what are they showing up? You know, are they ranking decently on Google? Those kind of things can give you a really good sense in how they're marketing their firm. And, and those, the, those are the, the folks that you want to reach out to first because if they're marketing their firm, 
they're likely, you know, bringing in a steady stream of leads, uh, meaning that they would have uh, more potential referrals to send your way. So this is just a, a quick look at a sample list. Um, we recommend including, of course, you know, the firm name. If you can find the lead contact, that's very helpful. We include, um, you know, the address, which isn't always necessary, but it's also kind of nice to know, you know, maybe the distance is showing some errors, but, you know, some dis the distance from your office, that could be helpful. Of course, the specialty website, phone number, email, anything you, that you can include to make it easy to, um, to kind of run down, run down this list. But I did want to, I did want to kind of reinforce that it really is important to take the time to kind of vet these potential referral sources contact before you start reaching out again to kind of ensure that, that you're reaching out to the partners who would most likely come across the type of client that you're looking for okay so uh, continuing with the setting appointment step uh, this is this is this is a big one because again at the top of the the course when we talked about time being the biggest hurdle great way to help with that initially is to delegate the outreach so you, of course, personally, as the attorney, will need to handle the first call with a potential referral source and, and you know, as much personalized follow-up as you can, but, you know, obviously a long-standing referral relationship will kind of only be forged if you're the one actually making the connection and, and building the mutual trust. However, with that said, certainly, you know, most everything else can be delegated, including this first step of, of making the appointment setting calls. So, Give the job to, of course, someone in your office who's not afraid of the phone, right? Maybe have your most personable team member set these appointments for you. Give him or her access to your calendar to kind of streamline the scheduling process. You don't want them to have to, you know, come to you every time they they get one of these uh, one of these professionals on the phone and ask for your availability, right? You want it to just be a streamlined process. You're available, you know, whatever your availability looks like, they can, they can, uh, you know, get that on your calendar and send um, automatic, you know, reminders to make sure that you and, and the professional both attend the meeting, attend the phone call. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's ways that you can really kind of streamline that. Um, so we say phone, not postal mail. So, we used to postal email on behalf of our clients, but it, it really didn't work no matter sort of how attractive the gives were that we offered or that we included. So I like to tell attorneys kind of the next time that a consultant tells you to approach your referral networks or your, you know, your referral partners with a letter, we really recommend that you kind of ignore that advice because it really just doesn't work. And I know, um, you know, a lot of a lot of people do send letters, and and certainly there is some success to the letter, but the the return is dramatically higher when you're calling uh, as opposed to postally mailing. So, um, of course, it happens quicker. You know, it takes it takes several days or a week for for a postal letter to arrive. Um, you need a landing page or somewhere to send them. You know, from that letter. So there's a lot more involved. So certainly, um, you know, calling is 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 definitely what what we recommend. So. Uh, once you or, or, of course, your team member starts calling the, the list of prospective referral sources, ask to speak to the attorney or professional. And you're, you, know, you might not get through, but, but ask for an email address and then leave a voicemail. Because, you know, frequently you'll find that you'll be transferred to the professional's voicemail or the attorney's, you know, direct voicemail, which is fine because, you know, we're going to, you're going to also be sending a follow-up email and text if you happen to have their cell phone number when possible. But many of the appointments that you set will actually occur after the voicemail is heard or, you know, after the email is read. So those messages will certainly bring return calls from the professionals or even the gatekeepers who are ready to kind of, um, you know, set, set an appointment, calendar an appointment on, on, on your schedule. So, um, and I think you'll find that the vast majority of appointments, the appointments that you set will, will be honored. Um, most of them will work out well, but we do suggest that initial meeting or that initial appointment is a phone appointment as opposed to um, a kind of in-person meeting uh, because it's a great way to screen, you know, to kind of, you know, provide an initial screening of of that contact, right? So you're doing some online vetting, you're doing some initial online research before you make the call, but then you actually, uh, you know, jump on the appointment and, uh, you know, it's important to kind of, you know, 
briefly and quickly figure out if if you think this could be a lasting relationship. Uh, you know, there could be the potential for um, you know this professional to consistently send you referral business. That's what you're looking for. And um, if it goes well, great. Then you know we recommend setting an additional in-person meeting. But if it's not a great fit, then you know it's no it's really kind of no big deal. What you spent five or ten minutes on the phone, you know, having a, a pleasant conversation with with a local professional and just realizing that that's probably all it'll be. So that's why we really do kind of recommend starting with uh, with that call. Um, I wanted to mention, so we now average two hours of work for each appointment set. So you, you know, if you want, you know, two appointments per month, you should plan on four hours of calling each month. Um, there, you know, so there, there certainly is a time investment necessary, but, um, you know, and, and certainly some specialties and some geographic locations are, are harder than others, but uh, that's, that's kind of the average that we found. So, you know, kind of mentally tuck that away and know that that's kind of the time commitment that, that we're talking about here. Um, you know, two, two uh, kind of high quality referral partner appointments every month seems to be a good middle ground in that, you know, you're not inundated, you're not overwhelmed, um, you know, trying to fit in all of these uh, referral appointment, uh, referral partner appointment calls. But at the same time, if you're, if you're handling, if you're taking two calls per month, that will, that's a really nice steady pace. And that, you know, before you know it, uh, you'll, you'll be building a really healthy or a pretty robust uh, network of referral sources at that pace. And it's, it's very manageable. Uh, but I, I always, I always tell attorneys, just don't overthink it, you know, just dial or, you know, just have, just have your team members dial, block out a little bit of time each week and, and, you know, start kind of start getting going on it. And certainly if an appointment gets canceled, try to reschedule it as soon as you can. We all get busy, kind of pulled into client matters or other pressing work. So just kind of be sure to reschedule those appointments because that, that will happen. I can tell you that for sure. Um, but, you know, try and reschedule as soon as you can. Um, because you know, if the professional scheduled once, then certainly uh, they are interested enough to 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 talk to you. So just kind of stay stay on top of of that. Um, so I included uh, a little sample script that you could use um, that you or your team you know your team could use when uh, trying to set these appointments. So um, I'll, I'll kind of read this and then we can talk about it a little bit. So, hi, my name is Cara. I'm calling from the Jones Law Firm. We're a personal injury firm here in Austin. Our founding attorney, Dustin Jones, asked me to reach out to see if Ms. Keller might be interested in chatting about a referral partnership. We regularly encounter clients we want to refer out and have heard great things about your firm. Would Ms. Keller or another partner be willing to chat with Dustin? I'd love to set up an appointment between the two of them do you have access to their calendar? So it's as simple as that. You don't want, you, you know, the goal is you're trying to, you know, your team member is trying to set an appointment for you. Um, you're not, you know, typically that, you know, we're talking to a gatekeeper here. So you don't need to get through to the partner or, or you know, one of the attorneys right away to kind of set that appointment. And, and um, you know, we found this to be, to be very useful and, um, you know, I think you would, I think you would as well. It, and, and we've tried all different angles, right? We, uh, at first we were, uh, you know, adding much more to it. It, it wasn't so concise and we weren't having the kind of success that, that we are now. So this is really kind of what we recommend. And then um, if you're, if you're leaving a voicemail, a very similar script would apply, but then also follow up with an email, uh, which you're basically saying the same thing in the email, but uh, be sure to include, and this is a, this is a look at, at an email, potential email template that you could use, but um, try to include a link to your calendar. So if you, if you use Calendly or if you have any kind of digital calendar, so if you use Google calendars, Outlook, um, you can connect to a very simple uh, appointment setter, appointment setting tool, appointment setting app like Calendly or Schedule Once or one of those um, that makes it really simple to just include a link in these emails, and then and then the the source or the potential referral source is able to self set an appointment, and and um, you know it'll just show up on your calendar. You guys will both receive those automatic reminders, and that's a really kind of slick slick way, streamlined way to do it. 
So I'll just briefly read this email since it's up. Again, say, you know, basically the same thing. Ms. Keller, our founding attorney, Dustin Jones, asked me to reach out to see if you might be interested in a referral partnership. We regularly encounter clients we want to refer out and have heard great things about your firm. We would love a trusted firm to send clients to. Are you available this week for a brief call with Dustin? Let me know what time works best for you and I will set it on our calendar. Or like I said, ideally, you're actually including a link directly to, to the calendar there, allowing for self-sets. So, you're just trying to pique interest. You're just trying to kind of tease the call. And more often than not, I, I think you'll be surprised at, at how receptive, you know, both the attorneys and professionals will be to, to this approach. Okay, so moving on to step two, initial conversation. What to ask and what to say. So, um, I, I use this quote recently too, but it's, you know, it's, we have two ears and one tongue so that we would listen more and talk less, I think is how that quote goes. But that's really kind of what we like to follow here, what we recommend. So during your initial referral appointment, referral partner call, try to kind of keep to that general rule of 75% listening, 25% speaking. So, you know, we certainly recommend start by asking about the professional's practice, maybe how it started, how they get leads and clients, perhaps even asking, you know, what types of cases they handle, case volume, um, maybe asking about their ideal clients. All of that is, is really great information to gather on, uh, on this initial call. So keep the early part of the conversation focused on the, the prospective partner and, and not on you. Um, but also certainly, uh, you know, try and learn and, and note down some personal items too, like, you know, family, outside interests, hobbies, you know, plans for the future, et cetera. Um, so that you are starting to kind of build a connection and, and build uh, a relationship and and you know i mean it's really a friendship right so um you know those are the those are the relationships that will be the most fruitful in the long run so it's important to um you know to kind of really cultivate that and really spend some time to to get to know these folks if if you want if you're you know truly genuinely trying to to build your referral network um and these are great you know gathering this information is just like i mentioned earlier a great way to screen out uh, you know, these, these sources. So, you know, based on their responses, you'll be able to tell, you know, pretty easily whether uh, you think it would be a good fit, whether, you know, there's a poten there's potential to receive referred business from, from, you know, this individual on an ongoing basis. Um, and then of course, after kind of collecting all of that information and learning, learning a little bit more about them, concisely kind of provide the same information about yourself back to them. Um, but, but you really should just kind of think of building the relationships the same way you would build a friendship. It takes time. I mean, it's essentially what you're doing. And, and um, you know, the more time you kind of dedicate to that piece, the, the, the more, the higher return you'll, you'll certainly receive. So, um, you know, more listening and less talking. <laughs> That's kind of the moral there. Um, so step three, super critical, cultivation. So of course, these new kind of budding referral relationships need to be cultivated. They need to be nurtured. Um, certainly staying in contact with ongoing gives and nudges uh, is absolutely critical. Um, to, and really kind of to engage your new customers or your new customers, your new partners, start with a give, right? So add value right away, then, then you know, try and stay in regular contact. Um, certainly before your first conversation um, and, and after your first conversation, you know, try to send a friendly email or, or even better, you know, right after, right after the conversation, uh, drop a handwritten postally delivered thank you note in the mail. That's kind of a lost, a lost art and certainly will, will have an impact. Um, but if you are emailing, try to provide something kind of in or, or with that email that could be of value. Um, let me kind of show you some examples. So uh, you could offer some branded consumer booklets that the professional could use in her own practice, right? So uh, for instance, you know, consumer oriented educational booklets that can be branded, um, used promotionally, but um, you could also offer marketing tips to help the professional, you know, get more clients or, or patients. 
Um, here on the screen now, you'll see a sampling of the booklets that we have created for attorneys. Certainly, you can, you can create uh, these as well. And there's really a lot of uses for these booklets once you have them created. I'll, I'll go into that in just a moment. But I mean, you know, providing certainly providing uh, these booklets to you know attorneys in in complementary specialties can can go a really really long way um so here's here's a look at uh you know personal injury uh booklet social security disability uh, business criminal um oops sorry about that uh and uh as well as uh estate planning and then here is a look at a few booklets for professionals as well so very similarly you could um you know provide booklets that that chiropractors or physical therapists or cpas or marriage counselors could use uh could use for their their own practice as well um and then uh newsletters. So here's a look at some sample newsletters, but newsletters are another great way to not only stay top of mind with your referral sources, but also, you know, you can use the same newsletter to, to stay in top of mind with past clients and other contacts who could be great referral sources for you. So um, you can either create, produce a, a digital newsletter that is emailed out that includes links, or certainly uh, there's, there's a wow factor to the print uh, version that is postally mailed. Um, you know, you want it to look good. You want it to be nicely designed. Uh, certainly, full color, glossy has the biggest um, kind of makes the biggest mark. Uh, but the whole point of the newsletter is you want people to actually read it, right? You want people to spend a little bit of time with it, however often you produce it. If it's monthly, that that might be a little over overly ambitious. But you know, if it's monthly, quarterly, even a couple times a year, uh, as long as you can kind of stay consistent with the frequency, that's the most important thing. But um, you know, you like I said, like you you just want people to to read it, potentially even pass it off to friends or family who might find it interesting. So try and keep the content. Try, try and sort of maintain a nice mix of content. So um, certainly some of the content could be legal focused, but uh, really the, the interesting articles are the more general interests, lifestyle, kind of seasonal pieces. Uh, maybe you could include a recipe or a joke or you know, something like that. Uh, that. That goes a long way. And I mean, you know, newsletters are old school, but they certainly uh, still, still work. And, and we highly recommend um, you know, either producing one in-house or there are, there are lots of, um, there are several you know, really high quality, great uh, newsletters that are providers to that that really kind of focus on on law firms that you could you know you could uh, check out. But I mean the bottom line is you need to be sort of consistently providing value so that you're then thought of when your partners have these high quality clients to send your way or when your past clients have friends or family who could certainly utilize your services. So here's a quick look at, at some sample uh, newsletters and I'd also be, be happy to send you more samples so you can get a better sense of the kind of content that works. Uh, okay, so kind of continuing around uh, along with the, the cultivation piece. Um, I hear all the time attorneys tell me that they really don't seek referral partners because they feel like they don't have enough cross referrals to provide. But I mean, it's important, like, you know, if you take one thing away from this presentation, from this course, I want you to know that we're not talking about a one for one, tit for tat, you know, keeping score relationship. There are other ways to provide reciprocal value rather, you know, rather than just every time uh, an attorney sends you a referral, then you need to send them one back. That's not how this is working. So, you know, when you can't always cross refer, which you can't always, so when you can't, you can deliver kind of frequent gives and thank yous to provide that kind of sustained value to your, to your partners, right? Um, it's important to kind of look for other ways to assist that you might already be doing, uh, like shared publicity, perhaps co-promotions. Um, and when I say co-promotions, you know, if, if you do have one of those newsletters, if you do produce a newsletter, include include your your new referral partner in in that newsletter. Maybe just a brief write up, a little spotlight, even just including their name and and uh, contact information will will certainly go a long way. And then you add your partners to your uh, circulation list for your newsletter, they get it. 
they see that that you know you've provided them you've included them uh that really really goes a long way that we've found um you know a lot of our attorneys uh like to do that and 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 really um have seen the return on it um uh maybe just some help helpful information that you come across you could send their way that's another way of kind of providing that value you read a helpful blog post that you think they would also find useful shoot it over you know with a with kind of a, a quick note and uh as long as you're doing something on a consistent basis it will certainly pay off um and you can also seek out small gifts kind of the the more tailored to your partner's interests the better so that's why i mentioned earlier try to learn a little bit about who they are as a person a little bit about their interests their family maybe wh where they went to school uh you know wh what sport te sports teams they're fans of those kinds of little things and um, you know, kind of be sure to include a personal note, of course, uh, with with any with any of those those gifts. But when I when I talk about a gift, certainly doesn't need to be expensive. It's really about being thoughtful and coming up with something that's kind of tailored to them. And um, you will certainly hear from them when they when they open something like that, and and will kind of help certainly help them remember you when they have business to send. Um, and then again, to reinforce, you know, of course, send send a thank you note after every referral that you receive from them. And it's also a good idea to send another thank you kind of when the matter is concluded, right? So you're you're um, kind of end capping um, the, the relationship in that way. And certainly if you do, if you can find the time to provide brief updates on, on the um you know the referred case uh to the the refer to the attorney who referred that case to you that can go a long way as well i know that takes a little bit more time but even just shooting you know a couple lines a, a couple line email you know every other week just so that they know that you're taking good care of that client that they sent your way right because they need to be comfortable if they're going to send you more clients they really need to be comfortable and confident that those clients they're sending your way are in good hands. They're treated as you know VIPs. They're they're really um, you know taken care of. So the best way to reinforce that is to open those lines of communication and, and keep them updated kind of throughout the process. So um, oh here's I wanted to to mention a kind of a bonus technique that you can use once you have created uh, some of these consumer booklets that I mentioned earlier, or even just one, even just one booklet. So you can certainly add the FAQ booklet to your website as as a lead magnet. So this is the the lead magnet and and follow up. Um, it's interesting. I mean, website lead magnets are really sort of marketing 101 in most industries, but uh, for for a book that that we recently that we recently have written, it's we've reviewed. Gosh, we've reviewed more than more than 2,000 lawyer websites, you know, in our research for our latest book, and only a handful, a very small handful of those sites actually offered a lead magnet in exchange for contact information. So, I mean, this near complete absence from the legal field of really kind of the single most potent internet marketing technique really creates a large a large opportunity for you so let me let me uh, get into specifically what i mean by a lead magnet so um essentially in exchange for contact information a a, an educational booklet that could answer most of your, you know, most of a, a prospective client's questions would be delivered automatically and you would receive the, the contact info. So basically to engage more of your website visitors, you can install an FAQ pop-up on, on your site. And here's, here's a sample. You can see here, um, you know, you want to collect name, email, oops, sorry about that. Uh, name, email, phone number, and then asking a small, uh, simple qualifying question is super important as well, so that you can kind of qualify and prioritize these leads. Here on this sample, it says, my need for legal assistance is dot, 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 and then if you were to click on this drop-down menu, it gives you uh, varying uh, options such as my legal need is immediate, my legal need is distant, my legal need is non-existent. So certainly those folks who uh, who select my legal need is immediate, you know, those are the leads that you certainly want to prioritize and follow up with as soon as you can, because undoubtedly a 
a, potentially a large chunk of your website visitors are may not be ready to book a consult with you right away or may not you know may not be ready to to talk to you they're they're in the research phase they're looking for more information they're looking to get their questions answered they might be meeting with several different attorneys uh you know trying to figure out who's the best fit who to hire so if you can be the one to really showcase your expertise with an faq lead magnet like this one uh, that will certainly set you apart because more more than likely your competition is not doing that right and and uh, these visitors who aren't ready to call you or make an appointment you know they would otherwise leave your site kind of without a trace and you would never you wouldn't have received uh, you know that contact information so this is a a really cool way to sort of a secondary use for these booklets that I was that I was mentioning earlier um, and let me show you kind of so so you you fill out this information the visitor fills out this information and then it's important to have kind of like a thank you page here and here's a sample of what I mean so that um, you know they'll they'll receive kind of tells them what to expect um, the booklets and I'll kind of read this so that so that you can you know know what I'm talking about but the booklets answers will give you a big head start on learning what you need to know when creating a smart estate plan however its information is necessarily general and may leave you with unanswered questions about your particular situation you may be wondering which trusts are appropriate given your assets or who you should select as executors guardians trustee whether you should have a healthcare directive etc so um, the key part is then providing your uh, your firm's telephone number here um, and we also uh, recommend you know if you have that that calendar that scheduler link to uh, allow your visitors to self set an, an appointment right with you kind of from this page is a great place to put it so really I mean it's it's this is such a critical piece that again is lacking so often and then of course if someone is is reporting that they have an immediate need, you know, you or someone in your office really needs to call those qualified prospects right away and suggest an office or telephone uh, appointment with you, right? So, and I'll tell you the the quicker that you can respond to these leads, the more success you'll have just getting them on the phone. Whether or not you're setting an appointment, you know, will will be you know will kind of vary but um, if you get them on the phone even if you're not setting an appointment you're providing a huge kind of customer service boost by answering any questions that that they might have um, again delegating this to a team member is always a good idea um, and then when they are ready to to hire that you'll certainly be top of mind to um, you know when they're when they're kind of looking for someone to you know for the attorney that is uh, the best suited for them so um, essentially with the same exact web tri web tra website traffic excuse me with the same exact website traffic that you currently have you will get more appointments with prospective clients if you have some sort of lead magnet on your site uh, with with the booklet like like I mentioned so it's it's super important to uh, I mean you know if, if um, if you're working with a marketing agency, they can help you kind of get this, uh, actually, you know, put the engagement device on your site, but it is really, really simple to do. And uh, you'll you'll certainly notice an uptick in, in your prospective uh, client leads as well as uh, the, the, the telephoning appointments. So um, it's important to, to consider that, yes, like, you know, creating these consumer booklets that that you will use you know for your referral sources as well as your prospective clients it, it's certainly time commitment but realize that once you have a book or once you have these booklets there are so many uses for it you know you can have print print copies of these booklets and hand them out to prospective clients who come in for a consult include them in a welcome package to new clients uh, email them out to your former clients asking your former clients to share this information with friends or family who might be going through a situation where this information could be helpful. So again, it's really about establishing yourself as that expert and that authority and then 
maximizing the use of that content really throughout kind of the full, like every stage of the client life cycle. So certainly gearing, you know, maybe a shock and awe package to prospective clients, uh, welcoming your new clients, helping you communicate with your current clients, helping them, you know, know what to expect throughout the process. And then again, staying in touch with former clients from a referral standpoint and, um, you know, providing these booklets to uh, attorneys, uh, to your potential referral sources as well. Um, okay, so, oh, kind of before we, we wrap up and, and ask for questions, I did want to just encourage you to make sure you're double checking the, the referral rules uh, with the Florida Bar. Here's a good uh, resource, uh, a link that, that we, can, we can send out to, but, you know, check the referral section. There are quite a few rules, but nothing that we have mentioned today, um, you know, comes even close to kind of those rules that are discussed. But of course, um, you know, we always we always uh, recommend that that you kind of do your due diligence there. Um, I wanted to mention that I'm more than happy to provide tailored advice. If um, if you, you'd like to contact me, you can. I, I love to talk about this stuff. I'm happy to give you some kind of customized tips. You can tell me a little bit about your, your goals and we can come up with, with a plan if you'd like. Um, but also, I'd, I'd love to give you a free copy of uh, our book, How Small Law Firms Can Obtain More Referrals. Uh, you can you can request a free copy. It's actually 145 pages. It's pages. It's pretty comprehensive. You can request a free copy at jamesreferrals.com. But the book really outlines a lot of what we covered today and, and kind of provides a, a detailed ro roadmap, is what I call it, a roadmap to dramatically increase your firm's flow of, of referred clients. And we include, of course, you know, proven proven techniques, some templates, um, even, even uh, a fair amount of case studies to help you kind of build your referral relationships with local attorneys, allied pros, and certainly past clients. So feel free to uh, you know, either request the ebook or we're also happy to send you a free physical copy of the book as well. And um, I think it will kind of provide a nice launch pad to helping you implement some of the some of the steps that we talked about today because you know i'm often asked this is a little overwhelming you know what's the first step what's one thing i can do today to start move start moving and to start moving in this direction and i always say create the list and just start making the calls that's all you have to do and, and you don't have to make you know tons and tons of calls just make a few calls every week or whatever you can fit in you have to start somewhere right if you're committed to this you can really it really goes a long way if you just start you know chunking out uh, an hour even a week to to this effort or you know bringing bringing a, a a team member into into this this process and just starting somewhere i'm starting is really the biggest challenge and uh, once you do i think you'll find that uh, the return on the amount of time necessary will will be more than worth it. So just start, you know, start making the calls. You'll learn a lot in your first few calls. You'll learn, you know, more about how, how to best approach. You know, you can use some of our scripting that I included here and and just go for it. And, and you know, I, I really think that you'll find uh, that these professionals and attorneys will be very open to speaking with you and um and you know it, it could actually be a lot of fun <laughs> in the end so um you know you're building your network you're building your relationships and and it's it's a long-term effort but certainly one that that has high high return so um you know feel free to to contact me with any questions that you might have but um you know, it's kind of the uh, the short and sweet version of, of how to get started. We don't like to overwhelm you, right? You, We want to provide practical advice that can be implemented pretty quickly and pretty easily within your firm. Uh, you, you know, even if you're solo, you can still see, see results in this way. So uh, that's uh, that's kind of the gist of it. But I know uh, Lisa probably has some some items to add as well. Yes, definitely. Uh, Car, that was that was amazing information. Thank you so much. Um, before we get into the Q and I just want to point out that one of the reasons why we really wanted to produce this particular CLE is because we know provenly that referrals and word of mouth clients 
are one of the top sources of revenue for law firms nowadays. It's it's proven. It's it's been like this for for years. And I can attest to the fact that as a marketer personally, you as a lawyer, you don't want to spend the time and the money that's involved in a lot of other marketing practices, such as digital advertising, print advertising, um, you know, services like marketing and and things like that. They do not come cheap and they involve a lot of time investment as well. But when you compare that to the few minutes that it takes to make a phone call and perhaps the two hours, as Cara mentioned, that it takes to form initially these referral partnerships, you'll find that your time is going to be much better spent in this direction versus trying to obtain clients in other ways. Because as you've seen, it's like a whole ecosystem. You've got the ability to reach out to your referral partners. You can create these takeaways that can be given to the referral partners, as well as those prospective clients who can then disperse the material to other people if they need to refer you to friends and family. So that is, and it's not just for lawyers. I mean, even in my my service, you know, SaaS, that you software as a service, we found that some of our best clients come from word of mouth. So that's why we were so... Uh, excited about this particular topic, and I hope that you guys are too. Uh, just to point out before, again, before we go into the Q&A, on the bottom left corner of your screen is the course number for today's course. It is uh, number 3801. Again, it was approved for one hour of general CLE for, for the Florida Bar. But Cara, we did have a question come in, and for those of you that do have questions, please feel free to use the questions widget in the GoToWebinar control panel. You can just go ahead and type those in because we do have a few minutes to go over some Q&A. Um, the question that came in are, and this would have been good in the beginning, who are these potential referral sources? Are they people we've met or are we essentially cold calling them? Great question. And it could certainly be either, right? So uh, if perhaps you have some relationships with uh, attorneys or professionals, you know, that, that you know that you just haven't reached out to in, in some time. Those are probably, I would actually start with those, right? So uh, kind of re-engaging with, with your network is a great place to start. Obviously it's a lot uh, a warmer, it's much warmer call. Um, but, you know, for, from our experience, you know, I, I, what I hear from attorneys is typically if they're looking to grow their network, they only have, you know, that's limited, right? So they're looking to grow it outside of, of the people that they already uh, are familiar with or that they already know. So um, that's when the kind of online research of these uh, of these professionals and attorneys kind of comes into play. Um, you know, I showed that that list uh, that that we compile at, at the beginning. Uh, and that's typically, uh, you know, those are typically new contacts. So so folks that that you probably haven't reached out to in the past, but people that you think would commonly come across the type of case that you're looking for. So it's really a combination. And, uh, you know, starting with those those warmer, you know, pre pre-qualified, I suppose you could say, uh, referral sources. That's a great way to kind of get used to the process. And um, obviously, you know, more than likely they'd be, they'd be very open to, to uh, connecting, considering you already have some sort of relationship with them. But on an ongoing basis, you know, to continue, you have to have a, a network. You have to have a, uh, a decent, always growing group of, of professionals, of, you know, of, of um, folks who are going to refer clients your way. If you do, if you are looking for a steady stream of referrals, if you want referred business to be a reliable, consistent way to, uh, to attract clients, then, you know, it needs to be an ongoing effort and, and, you know, continually bringing in new, new contacts into the fold. All right. Awesome. Um, we did have a question about whether or not you'll receive the slides in the recording, just to reiterate from, uh, the beginning of the presentation, if you were not here or if you missed it, it's okay. Uh, you will actually receive the recording of today's CLE in addition to the slides tomorrow via email. So keep your eye on your inbox and um, you will definitely receive this information. Um, I don't see if there were any other questions. It looks like we are good to go. Uh, Cara, thank you so much for being here today. It was definitely informative and um, thank you again. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. 
All right. Thank you so much, everybody. And we appreciate you attending our Legal Fuel Florida Bar CLE. And we look forward to presenting more CLEs in the year to come. Thank you so much. Have a great day.